Let's talk Shoto Die Ranger. Sodo! What's going on, Soda Population? As always, I'm your host, Frozen Stratos, and today we're going to do a little bit of catch up because uh, a few weeks ago we had our final blog uh, for Shoto Super Die Ranger. Uh, the pre orders are now closed for this set, but there were some updates in there that I figured would be interesting to talk about. But before that, let's take a look at this. Thank All right, so uh, they, on the blog, decided to throw together the henshin in a bunch of gifts, or at least the uh, the roll call into a bunch of gifts. So I decided to take it that little extra mile and add the uh, the audio to it, and I'm I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, but hey, yeah, we have Shoto Die Ranger, and if you've you know been uh, inspecting these images bit by bit, you'll know. These figures are a bit wrong. Um, so these figures uh, that they're showing off this time around, these are like the latest factory samples. The only problem was, uh, you know, they, they were testing out the arms. They did it wrong. So they ordered new ones. Those were right, but they were unpainted. So in this review, in this sort of uh, overview, we're gonna be taking a look at pre-production samples. These aren't final. They will be way more accurate, uh, and we will get to see uh, a glimpse of what they uh, were supposed to look like later, I, I think. Uh, but yeah, here is the whole team. Now you are getting all six uh, in this set if you pre-ordered it. Uh, and they wanted to talk to us uh, about some of the considerations they made during the production of these guys. Um, so first off, uh, let's take a look at the molding and the painting. For this set now everything's gonna be molded in their base color uh, sans the white uh, that seems to be done uh, like you know molded in uh, the white color thankfully uh, and it makes sense since there is a completely white figure in this set where there would be a white mold for everything else you're seeing here that's all painted um, the head is all painted uh, the the gold trim everywhere, all painted. Uh, the only thing uh, of note, though, is that the chest symbol, that's actually a sticker, which, you know, I get it. They rarely do this on, um, on typical figures. Uh, they usually save the stickers for the actual accessories, but in this case, it makes sense. There's a lot of tiny little details in there that painting just would not get right the first time or the first few times, so um, it makes sense to have a sticker here, at least in my mind. Your mileage may vary, but I think this is an appropriate inclusion of a sticker. Uh, moving on. Here is White, and you'll notice he is, like, you know, sort of the standout of the rest of the crew. Uh, basically, they wanted to show him off, mostly because, like, all the black and all the gold, that's all paint. So, this guy is mostly white. Um, now, for now, it's, it's painted black, but they are testing... Well, should we mold it in black? Is that an option for us? So that that could change through over the course of this. Uh, we don't know how that will shake out in the end, but I'm sure they'll let us know and they'll go for the the, the best option that you know looks good. Anyways, let's talk about posability specifically with this guy uh, because he can strike a pretty good pose, and that's because he has this brand new like shoulder pad mechanism. So the back of it, uh, highlighted in the uh, the magenta, that's actually connected to the chest armor. And then the front of it, that has a flap and that actually moves out of the way. Um, and, you know, we have a demonstration of it right here. That's sort of how it's supposed to work. And that allows for 
way better range, and I do appreciate that. Um, so yeah, that definitely looks good. You can even get the arms close to over his head uh, and strike that pose as well. So that's very awesome. Um, yeah, in terms of articulation, that's really all they wanted to go over, uh, specifically with him because he has such a big shoulder pad. Anyways, moving on, let's take a look at the accessories. The first one they wanted to talk about was this one, the Diren Rod, which is huge. Um, it is proportional to that of the, the rod in the show. Uh, so I think, you know, it's very effective here. On top of that, you have uh, what I believe are called the Yaiba. Um, and these are like the, I guess you could call them the gimmick. Uh, but basically there, there are different tips for each ranger. Um, and you can slot them into uh, the, the included... Um, uh, what are they called again? The discs and also the rods. Um, they do have a specific mounting point, so they won't swivel all around inside of a peg. So, you know, that's for you right there. Uh, there's also a different version of the ring, one that is, uh, compatible with all of the accessories, one that's just the ring on its own. That They did that just so that, you know, if you have the ring on its own, it doesn't look so wonky with a hole in it. Or you could just have them double wield, which is an option to you. Um, but yeah, moving on to a different set of accessories. Uh, this is the uh, the White Tiger Sword. Um, and this is basically how it goes in. So thankfully in this instance, we don't have a swappable um, holster piece. It is all just included in one. All you have to do is split the sword in half and plug it into either end, and it's very effective, as we've seen in the previous images. Anyway, let's take a look at um, another really awesome accessory, the bazooka. Uh, the super energy bazooka is what uh, Google Translate is telling me it is, but I'm pretty sure it has you know, a different proper noun name. Uh, anyway, it looks really, really good. It comes with a display stand, and... You know, it it works. Um, I am wary that, like, you know, it's just a stick there, and then it has a pretty sturdy base. But, you know, in my mind, it would make sense to have, like, a tripod or something. But whatever, I, I didn't design this. Um, anyways, you can slot in, um, I guess, these... Uh, I forgot what else they plug into. Uh, it is their main weapon, but you can separate that out and basically just plug it into any port you see on here. Uh, they're all compatible with it. Um, and yeah, his is basically that. Um, on top of that, uh, you can also place this weapon on the inside of it. Now, keep in mind, uh, I believe they were saying that... Uh, this version of the star sword um it it doesn't like peg in there is no version that pegs in it just sort of sits down on it which is i mean it's not the worst because like it's mostly a stationary weapon you don't really want to jostle this thing around um and yeah i i think it's fine personally uh there's also you know a different version that's a gun so this is a completely separate molded version that is specific to, uh, you know, just plugging into there, I guess. So that's very nice. Um, and also they wanted to recreate a few of the loading scenes. So you could do that here. We get to see this plug into uh, the other side. Uh, you can also put the hands around uh, the launching area back here. Uh, and there's even a little hole. Uh, they don't come with the the energy balls energy crystal balls but i believe they said one bb pellet fits in there so if you want you could paint that up and plop it right in and lose it uh so yeah that's cool and they all look really good um around this set anyways i do believe that's it that's all they had for this blog like i said it's the last one we're getting until this releases so uh here's everything absolutely everything it comes with um you know make sure that you're you're taking you're paying attention to this because 
every one, every single figure gets an extra weapon. Uh, so it's not just like, oh, hey, there's only one rod to share between the figures. No, no. Everyone gets everything at least once, except for their individual, like, uh, uh, spear tips and all that. Anyways, I do believe that that is it for this blog post. Like I said, we are kind of running this one a little late, but I did want to update you guys about that one because we have a very awesome follow-up to this. Uh, something very unprecedented unprecedented that Shoto Super has not done before. Uh, so make sure to subscribe if you want to get that information. And if you're still strapped for information and you still want more candy toy goodness, we have a video up here. Um, this should be uh, the previous episode. I don't know why it didn't load the other one, but uh, the episode I did want to, <laughs> you guys to see uh, was this one talking all about how Mainline Soto is now in Premium Bandai, which isn't great. But there's a whole discussion to be had about it. I really want to direct your attention there. So definitely hit this link here uh, if you want to take a look at that episode. But that's it for me up until we talk about the, uh, the next Shoto Super Set. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it.